it's like collective Outside of Japan, we out here cooling Zane and Nessa got connections We know you got questions right, That is uh, Leon's channel um, And he's doing some other content Ooh. And he's making a movie right now uh, yeah, With, a, with a, a, a little bit of us in it <laughs> A little bit of a, us A lot of Zane in it, I heard A little bit of me A lot of bit of Zane so much And a lot of on. bit of the Kansai Collective coming to you live today. Guys, thank you again for joining us for another episode here in Osaka, Homachi, Japan. Yes, What well, we've got yes. today, of course, Ace Questenberry and my co-host, the man. Zane Johnson. I'm here with Asa Questenberry. That was, that was better, I guess. I don't know. That one... Let's six, keep it. We got a lot to six, film today, six bro. Out of ten. We got to keep going my on. energy. We got, we got Zane to my right, and we've got... Leo to the left. Good sir, please introduce yourself to the folks at home. Yo, 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 everybody, what's up? It's MC Lito here with A Little Bit of Japan. We're on the Kansai Collective podcast, and I'm, I'm so pumped to be here. Thank wow, you man, that is so crazy. He, you, can, you can tell that he is not uh, the first time, it's not the first time he's in front of a camera. <laughs> not first time he's in front of the camera, and by the looks of it, yeah, kind of a professional. So, yes. Leo, what... What is all this, dude? What's going on right here? We've got a laptop, we've got a camera, we've got mics. What? You've got coffee as well, smart yeah. <laughs> man. What's what's going on, dude? Explain it to us. Okay, all right. So this is like the inception of live podcasts. Mm, I mean, it's, okay. it's weird because you're doing like the edited podcast, uh, and I'm live streaming uh, on my mobile rig here. What's okay. up, guys? Right? And I got the MacBook Air opened with the live stream, so I can monitor it and have wow. the people in the chat kind of react and. Ask questions. See, Zane, if, so if you had like any ounce of understanding of technology, we could do the same thing. We could, we, we could been, be this. We could. We could do that, or we can just <laughs> hire. We can just work hard, and hire someone to do it for well, us. We can just bring me. on Leo and a little yeah. bit of Japan onto our channel to do it more often. That's, that's what I was saying, guys. Like, I'm all about helping other content creators, wow. and I'm so passionate about that. So, like, uh, you know, you know, trying to share my knowledge, share my tips and tricks, and yeah, if you need help, dude, I'm I'm here for you. I'm here. Love where where did love your it, content it. creating uh, history, your 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 past start? Where did it start? That's a great question, man. Um, I think it just comes from a seed of wanting to be more creative, uh, right? Like as as uh, you know, we right, all right, here. Right. So I think the YouTube thing has been five years of procrastinating and not mm, like getting around to mm, it um, in the works, you know? Right. And I'm just like, well, I'm gonna do it someday and it never came around. But then you know what, like the pandemic hit. Right. And, and it was just like, oh, uh, everybody's locked at home. Right. Um, mm. YouTube's exploding, mm. right? Anything online's exploding. Games are exploding. And I'm just like, okay, if I don't do it now, I'm going to miss right. that chance, right? Uh, this is the wave, yeah. This is the way. This is the way. Hey, nice, cool. Nice. So, love it. Love it, love it. So, you jumped in. You said, you know, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. So, you jump in. And typically, so as if you guys are watching at home or if you're listening to our podcast, so Leo as well runs another channel, uh, Alito Pito. Japan. How? What's the, what's the best pronunciation? Oh, well, I guess it? in katakana you could say a little bit of Japan. A little but, bit of. Um, in English it would be a little bit of Japan, right? A little, a little bit of Japan. Japan. And, and some people just say a little bit of Japan. It's all good. Uh, a little bit of Japan. A little bit of Japan. So we'll we'll drop the the link down in the comments today or, or the the description to send you over to Leo's channel. Again, we've we've been on this string now of a little bit of collaboration with other Kansai based creators, yes. and for me, man, it, it's cool just seeing other people's experience because you and I went into it and we're like. We don't know anything at all. Mm. And it's just been awesome to connect with other people, seeing their setup, their approaches, how they got into it. So, Leo, man, give us some more about you. Man. How long you been? Typical typical foreigner questions. How long you been in Japan? Good question. Um, I've been here a long time. Um, for you who don't know me, I've been here like 18 years. Oh, oh, <laughs> dang, bro. Okay. I'm, I'm your senpai. I'm your Japanese senpai. We that got an OG long. in the crib. <laughs> Facts. I'm old. You have earned your stripes. Yeah, yes. without a doubt. Okay. Where are you from originally? Originally, I was born in the Philippines, but moved to Canada when I was a baby. Mm. Mm. So I'm kind of like almost born in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> or in Canada, I would say. I'm from Vancouver. I'm very, very well. West Coast. Very, City. Very this is weird. Do you have what's your visa? Do you, you have a um, in Japan ca or Canadian in visa or a, a Philippine passport? Oh, passport, passport. I'm yeah. sorry. Passport. Um, passport. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much Canadian, eh? 
Um, <laughs> eight. <laughs> um, I got citizenship when I think when I was like seven or eight or something. I don't remember. Aww. But yeah, it's been Canadian, and it doesn't really make too much sense to have dual citizenship. I, I guess okay. I could, um, but there's no real benefit to it, so it's just more hassle and mm. having to. So currently, you have a Canadian passport. I do. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but you've been living in Japan for 18 ever. years. I mm. hope they gave you a permanent residence. Okay. Here's the crazy oh, thing. Okay. My oh God. man, there's always a story, isn't there? Okay. So, like. Supposedly, you can be in Japan for about, they say roughly 10 years, and then you can apply for it, right? But like, I was at a cushy job. I've been teaching English for a long time, right? Cushy job, they've been updating my visas every three years or five years. And I was like, yeah, I'll get around to it, get around to it. And I never got around to it. Like, 15 years passed, I never wow. got around to it. Because it it's kind of. It's a, a process. lot of paperwork. Yeah, yeah it's a process. Yeah. Oh, it is? Typ oh, it's, typical it's Japan. Crazy. Yeah, it's, it's a huge it's a process. Dang. There's a lot of hurdles, and then like. And the waiting time is just like so, like six yeah, months of like, right. am I gonna get it? Am I gonna Aww. get it? You're, you're asking to be a permanent resident in, in Japan. That doesn't let anyone yeah. live here. Yeah. It's such a long That's process. That's crazy. Right? Yeah, and it's not automatic either, right? Mm. Like you could just be in ten years, get all your paperwork done. Mm. There could be like one little thing that you're missing. That they're sorry. like, hmm, you're the wrong skin tone. Sorry, but it could be that. <laughs> That's totally how could it goes. Be. That is crazy. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of foreigners, guys, that have been living here for many years and. <laughs> have this problem it's kind of scary for me because i'm going for that i want to go for that permanent we residency all, we, we all want the pr yeah. man well what's so for for those at home that if you if you've never lived in japan if you've never had the wonderful experience if you've never been to a japanese immigration office mm. the holy grail for all foreigners typically if you want to be here long term in japan is the permanent residency visa and Thanks. this is a visa that allows you to have any type of job in the country, you can live wherever you want, you can pay your bills however you want, and you can actually leave Japan for, I think it's like four years and 364 days. Mm. Wow. You can be outside of Japan. If you come back within that five-year period, they you get another five years. Mm. So it kind of allows you to make Japan your home base mm. and and really kind of be here. All the foreigners here, if you've heard on our channel, you know, everyone's got a story, but you'll have to pay your bills and the visas limit how you can pay your bills. If you're on a traditional teaching right. visa, mm -hmm. you can only work for that school to make money. So that, that PR, that permanent residency is, is everyone's goal. Yeah. Really, really informational stuff there. In my experience, like, I think technically you can still do other schools. Like it, it used to be like back in the day. I'm gonna drop some names to kind of show my age. Okay. Here, okay, we're talking like Nova. Yes, Nova. Nova. I okay. was a Nova. Okay, brought in. Yes, right, right. So a lot of people think, and I think Nova technically was like trying to like put a noose around people's necks. Mm. Like you can't work anywhere else. Mm. But actually, legally, you can. As long as you got the visa for the entire, you know, until it expires, right. you're technically able to, but Nova will guilt trip you into not. Mm. Um, however, you know, you can do other work as long as it's somewhat English related. It's under the umbrella of that visa. Well, so. I guess for the quick question, because there's two teaching, are you on the teaching visa or like the humanitarian Humani humanities and English engineering, right. whatever that is. Right, right. Special in humanities yeah, slash yeah. Is engineering. That, is that your visa? That was my visa for the longest time, right? And, and just to add a little bit, I don't teach English anymore because of the pandemic. So like okay. a year in, wow. my company started downsizing and, mm. um, you know. For the better. Yeah, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise. Not that I don't like teaching, and, and I know a lot of people come here to teach English. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. Um, everybody comes here for different reasons. But I just felt like... Is there something else that I can do? Is there something else that I'm, if I don't do now, will I not be able to do it later? So I feel like I can always go back on teaching. So, sorry, a long winded answer to your question. Um, I don't have the special and humanities visa anymore because I changed to a marriage visa. I'm the spouse of a Japanese national. I got married. Dun, Congratulations. Dun, dun, Congratulations. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So, due to my complacency of not getting the permanent resident, I'm gonna this time, like, Right at three years of that marriage visa, I'm, You're like, I'm Give me that right PR. in there. Like, yes, I'm, I'm that's, that's the attitude, bro. Keep yeah, it, man. keep it going. And I'm curious, were you always like, because you you just fit the the personality type of a a podcaster? Like, were you always like this, or <laughs> was this through your recent you know path of becoming a content creator that this personality had came up? Oh, that's an awesome question, Zane. Um, yeah, I think this has been years. In the making, mm. like I, I don't think people can like to people can change, but it's not like okay, I'm gonna be a YouTuber now. Hey, hey, everybody, hey, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. <laughs> I don't think it works that way, you know. Right, and I don't right. think it should because people will see right through you. Yeah, right? you gotta okay. be you. Um, so this is me. 
Um, I think I fell in love with this type of, like you said, I'm comfortable in front of a camera, I'm comfortable in front of people, uh, ever since I was in high school. I did drama, you know, oh, you know back okay. in the day with that wow. kind of okay. I'm a drama game. rat. Nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Theater and improv and all that mm, stuff. So it, it, it just came it. from That's there. Cool. You know, living from in Vancouver, Hollywood North, I tried wow. to get in the, the TV so and film scene. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I know some people. A lot who, of people don't realize that about Vancouver, oh, it's man. It's huge, it's huge, yeah. It's the, second, it's the second most popular filming place, like, I think in the world. Oh, really? World. Probably. Like, outside of Hollywood? Oh, yeah. Because mm. yeah. the government has this tax setup where, like, you can film there and pay, like, no taxes that you would in the U.S. So, Vancouver, man, yeah, definitely. Tons of filming. Yeah, yeah. So I got a kind of taste of performance in Vancouver. Okay. Unfortunately, at the time when I was growing up there, like people of Asian descent would never get leading mm. roles okay. in, in movies. Like there was mm. like the Jackie Chan and like the Jet Li. Right. But if I got into that, I'd be stereotyped right. so bad. Right, right. Like I'd be like the Asian Im immigrant mm. or like the ESL <laughs> student or like oh, no. the gangster or something. Oh. And you know, looking back on it now, that would have probably gotten me more work <laughs> if right, I got stereotyped. Right, right. You want to get stereotyped now? But like, uh, anyways, that didn't fall through. You know, fast forward a bit. I, I finished university, work a few years, and then I'm like, let's go to Japan. Let's let's mm. do the dream. Well, why? 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 Why is that? Oh, that's a good question. Bing bong. Yeah. Bing bong. That's that's the, the deep question. <laughs> um, yeah, and I want to ask you guys in a future date, but for me, it's like. Um, the history of Japan and the modernness of Japan. Mm, that contrast mm, for me is just mm. so unique and interesting. What part of uh, Japanese history that do you like, or you yeah, know, is, I, it, is it the architecture? Is it the the actual history itself, or what is it? It's the what's that like the the three romance of the three kingdoms, the the like the shogun ninja mm. okay. samurai Aww. era, like that era. I think it's like what draws in a lot of people, right? right? Mm -hmm. So like I was like looking up ninja ma comics and magazines, mm. like that's what I mean. That was like. Turtles the the image of japan that was not sold in a bad way but that's what was sold to the world is what draw on a lot of people their interests right i'm curious because we're from america he's from canada like what was like the canadians like outlook of japan because we confuse like uh kung fu and with uh, and ninjas we just assume every asian asian, asian is, culture yeah. is oh, it's, exactly it's, it's either japanese or chinese mm. is it canada the same well i come from vancouver so i can only oh, speak right, from that right, experience right, right. and to be honest like the two majority populations mm. are asians mainly chinese oh. but you'll have a subset of like Filipino, Chinese, mm. uh, Malaysians, um, Japanese. There's right, a big Japanese okay. community, actually. Huge right. Asian community in yeah. Vancouver. Um, we have this whole street, kind of like little Tokyo, little Japan. Mm. It's called Powell Street. Mm. And we have like Sakura. And it's very mm. built in. Oh, nice. Yeah, like you go to Canada, people know the word izakaya. Yeah. They know oh, that word. It's, wow. it's like a daily That's word. That's fire. Right? My favorite thing about Vancouver when I lived there, it was funny, maybe not Kansai Collective appropriate, but like the mix of like the Asian community as well. But you walk down the street and it's like, it's uh it's coffee shop cafe sushi restaurant yep. weed dispensary <laughs> softy sh like coffee shop cafe sushi That's weed dispensary fire. just in repeat all right. day long yeah vancouver vancouver is a cool place man definitely one of my favorites so okay so not to not to cut into this question so for you just to kind of reiterate it mm -hmm. started with that those romanticized image and ideas of the three kingdoms the, the traditional historical japanese stuff right that built the interest in Japan. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So to build on that, what was the question, or what was the deciding moment you were like, okay, now I gotta go to Japan? Because people have interests all the time, but when, when do you decide to actually mm. make the move? Yeah, awesome, awesome. Wow, to make the move, I mean, I think the, the turning point was in high school. So um, Vancouver and Yokohama are actually sister cities. Wow. So, Did not know that. Cool. Yep. Yeah, the Board of Educations in both cities have this exchange program set up. Mm. And I was like, I'm getting in on that. You know, I'm, I'm nice. totally getting cool. in on that. And so I applied as four guys, four girls from both cities. Mm. And I was luckily to be one of them. Nice, okay. Yeah, went to Yokohama for three weeks, mm. um, did a homestay, the whole works. Actually, the crazy thing is, I have relatives in Japan. Oh, um, they're, so they're yeah. from the Philippines, and got uh -huh. the, my aunties got married to Japanese. Mm. And so I spent a week in Chiba with my uh, auntie mm. at the end. Mm. Nice. Um, and that, that one experience, just like all of the culture shock, all of the awesomeness, all of the, the language barrier. Set it all into motion. Yeah, exactly. It was the tinder mm. that let the fire for my passion grow. <laughs> I love it. You love know? It, love it. And like right out of university, I was like, what's the first thing I want to do? Well, like, my best friend helped me. Like I was kind of lost. I was like, okay, I wanted to be a French teacher. Maybe I'll be an acting teacher. And mm. then I was like kind of lost. And he's mm. like, Lito, you like sharing your knowledge. Mm. Uh, you like uh, Japan. Why don't you go there and teach English? Mm. And he's like, 
made sense. Clicked. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Mm-hmm. So I, I think also real quick, because we were talking about like, did, did Leo like have this personality already? But I think like naturally with a lot of people that teach or have to present information as well, you know, drama in that sense, they have that personality, that ability to lead conversation mm-hmm. just innately. I mm-hmm. think I think if you don't have that ability in a in a teaching profession, you're kind of going to be you know it's an uphill battle the whole mm-hmm. time. So I find a lot of people that mm-hmm. are good teachers have that ability to properly communicate and convey ideas and lead discussion. So it's natural that that would kind of benefit you in this new role in the podcasting mm-hmm. world, man. Cool. Nice. All right, let's get into your content creating, man, because right. this is what you do. Um, I respect you for, uh, you know, go, taking it in your own hands and starting your own business, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. um, what type of content do you usually create for people? Yeah, good one. So I started with live streaming, and that's oh, kind of like my main like pillar of stuff. As what, you can what, see, what, gradu- what gra- gravitated you towards that? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, one, I, I kind of sucked at editing at first. Aww, like, I kind of dreaded it. Okay, you know, so, some people are like really into it, but I was just like, I'd rather just take Chuck the videos. The I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> edit it. It's just like, ah, oh, it's a pain. Mm, but now I'm starting to get into mm. it. But so it's like, okay, less editing. But the other thing is like, so another another kind of story of mine is like, I'm a musician, right? So I I I were in bands for like almost my whole time in Jack Japan. Jack of all trades. Yep, just came from an acapella rehearsal. I, I did voice percussion beatboxing for that. Give Ace really, a you know. beat and he's gonna rhyme <laughs> over okay, it. No, that'll go. be that'll be okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. On the collective, get, getting a little bit hectic. I'm a little bit dyslexic. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. see, there we go. Just, just give them a teaser, Asa. Can't they gotta pay more, for that? More, more behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Loving that content. The freestyle. Check it out, guys. So, I love that. That was so cool. okay, man. So you got the the musician background. You yeah. got the creator background. But you started live streaming because yeah. editing sucks and live streaming. You don't have to do it. And live streaming. To me, I, I I treat it like a live music show. Mm. You know, like you're up there on stage, okay. you're entertaining the people, uh, and also like giving them a, a place to kind of wow. convene. So like, you see my personality when I was like mm. on. You know, when right, I'm on, right, I'm just like, yo yo, everybody, how's it? It's like a party. Right. You know, the I'm, MC style. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. the MC leader, right? So mm. I'm I'm playing at the Blarney Stone. You know, every Saturday night, and mm. it's like, oh wow, cool. Yeah, well, not before, right? Uh, for doing it for years, and it was just like it was so natural for me. So that when I did live on YouTube. I just kind of trans. You, like you said, all these skills are very right, trans- right. and and it brings a, a different energy, a, a different vibe that makes people want to come back. And I think that's what YouTube is trying to instill in your content, like not just get new subs, but to keep them there right. and, and to keep them coming back. Right. So, to build that type of brand that they relate with, that they want to tune into your new content, they want to tune into. So very cool, man. Very very okay. original. So approach. what are the obstacles like? Like when you first started out. Like what? What was difficult for you besides like the editing? Like, mm-hmm. how did you start like uh, getting more followers to follow your YouTube? Oh, that's such a good question, man. That that is the struggle. Mm. I, they, they say you know I, I watch a lot of YouTube channels like hey you know how to get a thousand subs real right. fast and this content and creator clickbait yeah, clickbait clickbait yeah. yeah. <laughs> well you know and and. It's almost like Buddhist Dharma. Like you hear like, oh, there is no spoon. I'm like, what does that mean? There's no, there's a spoon. But then later in life, it'll just drop and you're like, oh yeah, there's no there spoon. There is no spoon. So, so it's like <laughs> the hardest thing is getting that traction, right? right. And you don't realize it until you start doing it. It's like, man, this is tough sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's, it can be very lonely. It's a full-time job. Facts. Yeah. That's full-time entrepreneurial job. life. Right. Well, we talk about, I mean, it's, mm. I think, I forget where it was, but it was saying that like less than 0.03% of YouTubers bring in more than 95% of viewers and revenue. Yeah. Mm. That just one that speaks to how vast content is on YouTube. But mm. but to me I I think what I've kind of like doubled down on and to me what's really enjoyable is is if you are starting YouTube and especially if you're in a different place or whatever, starting a creative outlet. I mean, especially if you're in a different place or whatever, starting a creative outlet. Stop being focused so much on the end goal. Like I have to get this many subscribers. Like at this point in my life, man, when I get into the studio here, it's just fun. It's just something I look mm-hmm. forward to in my week mm-hmm. that I enjoy doing. And if you focus so much on the the aspect of trying to, to make it, to get paid from it, it just kills yeah. that whole mm-hmm. motivation because, mm-hmm. yeah, man, you'll put out content mm-hmm. and you, I mean, very, very little response. So you have to yeah. enjoy doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. 
it's like um it doesn't matter how good your content is man you know if the algorithm ain't playing your, on your side man, right, man. you just yeah, ain't so gonna get no looks gotta love it you gotta love what you're doing regardless exactly but you're just dropping nuggets there just heavy nuggets yeah. captions yeah. quote us man so, put it on the channel so um i'm curious like if we were, or somebody who wants to come to Japan, wants to start a YouTube uh, page, and you've been pretty successful. What what are some um, skills or, or like tips you would offer them? Oh man, that's a good question. I, I just feel honestly, I, I've just hit the one year mark, you know, and I'm I'm still I'm still learning. I'm just a baby. I'm a YouTube baby. Yeah. Um, but if <laughs> if I were to give advice for someone who's starting, um, is don't worry too much about the technical stuff. Mm. Like, just go out, make your content. It can be shorts. It can, you can use your phone even. Don't worry too much about the technical stuff. Just get stuff out there. Are, are you looking at Leon for that? I'm looking at Leon because this is uh, universal. Don't matter right. what um, art form you do, I think you make should just stuff. do it. Make it. Just do it yeah. like Nike said. Yo, if you look at, I mean, I don't, do you follow Gary Vee? Yeah, man. Dude, look at Gary Vee's stuff like 13 years ago. I mean, he was, I mean, no offense to Gary, but it was, it was, garbage compared to what he's putting out right now so just building Yo, off what I was, Zane says. I was i was watching the nba 1996 uh championship okay. the bulls and the fucking and, <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> uh, what is it? now we're talking basketball okay yeah uh i watched the game and it's terrible quality like it's it's very hard to tell what the player it's who like the players 30 are years ago yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying but yeah mm, so the quality is just terrible now you look at it right consistency yeah, man. so yeah you can't exactly like you're saying you yeah, can't bulls focus and supersonics too much. 19, 1996 sean kemp bulls won nice that's not sean kemp no yes yes he was, was in the kemp, super was yeah kemp, kemp mm -hmm. was kemp mm -hmm. was on that on the supersonics oh. big basketball time nice anyway, nice i can tell um but yeah man you can't focus on the technicalities you can't focus on the technical stuff you can't focus on your lack of equipment it's just about one putting stuff out mm -hmm. you have to continuously put stuff out which is a full-time job but you you have to do it you can't wait till you get the correct lighting or the correct equipment it helps but as we talk about here in the studio at the time like there's so many things we want to upgrade here at the studio whether it be our blown out lighting behind mm -hmm. us the the cameras you know the studio lighting it doesn't matter you ha you'll get there eventually but you're even if you have all the correct equipment if you don't have that quality nice of the one. content coming out, I don't know. Just over my face. Face. I, yeah. I was no questioning <laughs> because a good friend is going to tell you, and I love Asa, everybody. So, you know, I've been kind of mean to him recently. So I'm, <laughs> I'm I self-reflected. But anywho, back to Lido. Um, I'm curious, bro, because how many times do you post one? And do you post when you want to post, or do you keep onto a schedule, or like when you feel like motivated? Like, what? How do you? How do you post, bro? Nice one, nice one, dude. I'm gonna yeah. take the live stream. All right, is that okay? Yeah, you're in Ace's hands now. Okay. You can. Here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give Ace a quick um yeah. quick tutorial about how to use the gimbal. Okay, and think, then we'll get back to the. Think question. of it like a gun, and okay. just double tap. We're gonna set, reset like there, a gun. Right? And there you pew, go. Pew, and pew, pew. Twist your wrist and like point it like a gun, and it'll go where you want. Look right, at the right, flick right, of a right, wrist. Right, right, right. Um. Yeah, yeah. So to answer your question, like the, the posting schedule and mm, how much content mm, should you mm, be making, what time. Mm, mm. So I think what I've learned so far, and I'm still just learning, right? So when I do live streams, you definitely want to try to get at least one live stream on if it's if it's live, mm. or you guys do edit it. But try to go on at the same time at the same oh, day, right? So I'm like right now, I kind of do Sundays at nine, ten p.m. around that same day. Mm. Consistency, so people mm. know when they're gonna see you live. Mm -mm. It's really important for live. Mm. But when you're doing other content. They say once a week and this, that. I would say just, anyways, just get into the rhythm of finding it to put it in your, your lifestyle, mm. in your schedule, right? Because if you put like the best video and you only do it like once every six months, then people aren't going to come back, yeah. you know? They, they might not remember you, right? So like I do calligraphy and when I do calligraphy, um, there's days when I don't feel like doing it. Like, do you ever feel like you don't, you don't want to do it sometimes when you have that set schedule? For sure, man. For sure, dude. Like I'm, I'm like I do the Sunday night Lido bunch, uh -huh. and I'm just like, oh man, oh, the Lido God. bunch. The Lido bunch, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like the Brady bunch is the thumbnail. It's funny, but um, yeah, it it feels like oh, I gotta do this, but. There are times where you do have to just say, draw the line, like, oh, I need time for me. Oh, you know, it's your mental right, health and, right. and you need that time. Because if you don't take that time, you're going to get burnt out, right? Mm. And you're going to be, like, regretting it. So try to be consistent, but within your own 
boundaries mm. this is what i'm trying to say yeah man the burnout is a huge part because exactly what we're saying if you don't like it yourself or you aren't enjoying it then the quality suffers as well yeah right so you, sure. you got to make sure you don't burn yourself out there mm, we'll, sure. we'll we'll bring the live stream back so these guys can i was trying to hand it off to zane but you give this guy um, technology yeah <laughs> he's i'm, free, I'm here he's cool things. with the mic you feel me that's all i can do <laughs> It's all good, guys. It's all good. I like that. It's funny. So where do you where do you plan to take this content? What do you what are you trying to build? Um, what is like the goal with your content creating? Awesome, dude. Yeah, like the goal is to basically one uh, harbor this community that I have. Like mm. the, the community is awesome, and they just keep coming and and like. I will schedule my lives, but sometimes I'll just go impromptu. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be in, right. in Osaka today. Uh, Let's just like uh, do this. We're, we're going to be in Nama tonight. Yeah, yeah. And I'll try to give them the heads up, but like at least once a week, these impromptu lives, try to do it there. But basically what it's trying to do, I'm trying to grow my empire. No, you know, like <laughs> grow my empire. No, 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 but seriously, no, no, no. empire thoughts. Yeah, yes. but first thing is like, if you want to do something full time, you need money for the mission, right? Facts. And, and a lot of YouTubers who do get success, they don't think of that, right? They'll have like 500,000 subs, but they're like, then they, you hear them like, how do you make money on YouTube? I'm like, you never thought about that. Like, mm. if you get success, how do you make mm. money so that you can mm. keep mm. upgrading? Patreon. Keeping, right? It, you know, it's Patreon, <laughs> Patreon. It's, it's merch. Um, a lot of people think, oh, like I got the, I'm monetized now so I can get blah, blah, blah per 100,000 mm. uh, views. But honestly, that's not a lot of uh, people's mm. percentage of their income. It's, it's like stuff outside of that. Okay. But you don't want to think of it just as a business either, mm -hmm. right? Like these are real people. Like pe all the guys in the chat now, I see your faces, I see your your chats, and I'm like, I want to meet with you one day. Mm -hmm. Like if you ever do come to Japan, my my whole thing is to entice you engage, to want right. to come to Japan, engage. Let's let's go, let's hang out, let's do a tour or at, something. At the well, end of the day, yeah. it's it's community building. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so much sure. modern, I mean, business these days, I mean, if you look at the crypto community, if you look at DAOs, if you look at the big successful NFT projects, like it's it's community building. People want mm -hmm. to be involved in, the, I mean, humans naturally want to be in a tribe, right? They want to be a part yeah. of a community. So while yes, you can make money on YouTube, but really what you are doing at the end of the day, the successful YouTube channels, in my opinion, and most successful things these days are where communities are successfully built and nurtured, mm -hmm. right? So people are excited to be involved in this yeah. community. So sure. that's, that's all what it's really about. I think what, uh, what do you offer as far as um, that people can support you and mm. not just by the views of right. the YouTube? Good question. Good question. Yeah. So um, a lot of uh, like people are helping me out with, with merchandise and mm. like marketing stuff. Okay. They said like you should already put PayPal up there. Just put it up uh, there. And I was like, really? Like, don't, should I wait till I have a thousand? Like, just put it up there. You never know. Mm. And you know what? There are a few people who have dropped some donations. Uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's actually on a way in a sense it's better than the um getting monetized and people doing super chats because mm. youtube takes a percentage like every company's gonna they take 30 percent of it right. so they get right? paid um and so there's there's paypal there's like there's all these things like um buy me a coffee and, and there's other mm. things like that then you also have patreon so it's like you give extra value to right. people who want right. to be in your inner circle uh there's memberships on youtube um, and yeah, there's, there's tons of like, ways. Yeah. So you're saying basically what I hear you're saying is that it's very possible uh, to make an income um, doing content creating because I'm sure there's some people who, you know, want to be content creators but are very scared to take that leap be mm -hmm. um, because they don't know where the money is coming from. But you're saying that it's it's definitely doable. It's doable if you're tactical about it, right? Mm. You have a plan. Mm. If you, uh, maybe quoting Gary V or Sean Cannell or something, uh, if you, if you uh, fail to plan, you, you're planning to fail, right? So you gotta there have- There you go, you heard it from uh, Lido. Right? You give a lot of, you know, your whole, um, your whole personality has been shining, you know, like you say, you've been given a lot quotes. of- uh, <laughs> Been, been given a lot of uh, information. Your uh, acting skills have been flying natural, all over the man. place. It's natural. <laughs> um, you know, I want to just uh, be, because we're on the Kansai Collective, and you're in Nada. Yeah. Um, what do you like about the Kansai area, bro? What keeps you here? Mm. Oh, dude, it's definitely the eighteen people. years. The yeah, people. Man. It's the people. It's Amen. the culture. It's the vibe. I, I think like if if um. If you come to Japan and you go to Tokyo, you're gonna be like, oh, this is Japan, this is what I studied in the books. But if you come to Kansai, you'll be oh, like, yeah. this is the Japan I never knew about. Right, and it's the fun city. It is. It's a fun region, yes. All of my friends who come here, 
And uh, they're like, dude, I wish I wish I knew about Kansai earlier because yeah, I would have been right, there first. Right. I'm, I'm not I'm not like trying to foster the rivalry between between Tokyo and right, right, of Osaka. course not. But like, we love Tokyo too. Yeah, man. Like when you come here, We're man, you know it's it feels like home. It feels like home away from home. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes your home. So. Mm-hmm. To me, that was my thing when I when I came to because I've always lived in Osaka. It was I, I felt so many parallels and connections between how things were in my hometown to how personalities of people were here in. in Osaka, so that was good. Mm-hmm. So, we found out why you like Kansai, what brought you here. But a quick question: how how long did you do outside of Kansai, and how long have you done now inside Kansai? Year Dude, wise, I've been inside Kansai the whole time. Oh, okay. Yeah, always yeah. from the from the Chef's very beginning. Chef's kiss, yeah. Mwah, perfect. <laughs> Mwah, lovely. We love Mwah. to hear it. Mwah, beautiful. It. So to me, it really like the coolest part about doing this is how many people we get on in the studio and we ask them why Kansai and the number one response we get always is the community. It's the community of people and it just shows the show mm. like how we've talked about how supportive this area can yeah, be and, yeah, and yeah. how you can just the connections I feel come way easier in this part of the country. So so I guess one, one of my final questions to, to wrap it up Leo is you've been here quite a bit of time now. Mm-hmm. I mean arguably probably a lar- the, the largest chunk of your life has now been in Japan. Definitely. Mm. What is that like? Like, because for me, I'm at this point now where, you know, you go back to, I, I still visit back in the U.S., but I, I'm, I'm firmly rooted in Japan. Mm-hmm. So for you, having most of your life been now in Japan, you're not, not your home country. What, what is that like at this point? Yeah, definitely. Like when I go back home, okay, so I'm in Japan and I say home as in mm-hmm. Canada, Vancouver. Right. But when I'm back home, I, and I go, oh, yeah, you know, back home. Right, <laughs> like, right, you're afraid right, of Osaka, right, right? right? So that's the first mentality. And then people ask me all the time, so Japanese people, uh, foreign people in Japan, you're going to live in Japan forever. Mm. And it, and after about the three-year mark, like that's the big hump, right? Oh, really? Like okay. about three years, a lot of people is like, am I going to be a lifer in Japan? I'm going to stay here longer or I'm going to go back to my country. And if you stay here more than three years, you're probably going to stay here a while mm, because you like it here, right? Mm. You just like it. It's also a trap. It can be, it can be. If you don't know about the trap, you can check that out on our previous episodes. The yeah. golden handcuffs, as some people the call golden it. golden handcuffs. You get a teaching right. job, you get a Japanese wife, you never learn Japanese. Oh, Very hard to leave Japan when you do that, so be careful. You know what's crazy, though? I always kind of think that it's going to be crazy to die in another country. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's probably going to be pretty crazy mm. to die to begin with. <laughs> I think regardless where you're at. But but to say, like, you know, you're not in the country you're born and, and die, you know, that's it's weird. It's weird to think about. It's weird to think, like, because I don't know, but like, for example, when I want to die, you guys hear it here first, like, I want to be turned into a tree. I want that mm. tree to be planted. And then I want them to cut down the tree long after and turn it into like chairs so I can support my family for for <laughs> generations to come. Swag. Right? Right? Mic He's drop. Thinking, yeah, like to like make me into a beautiful generational chair. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me let me support my but but what's interesting you say that dude because like I know for a fact if I die in Japan my parents would be like, He's getting turned into a tree in America. Aww, and if I have a wife yeah. in Japan or another country, they'd be like, No, he's gonna be a tree here mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so yeah, that's so that crazy. would it would be yeah. it's a weird like be i never thought yeah where do i become a tree at? yeah who knows man but <laughs> it's a really weird that, question that is ask. a deep question Zane. i've never thought about that but my the first it's thing weird, my parents yeah. did when they immigrated to canada they're like i want I, I'm, I'm gonna do my mother's accent okay oh i want to die in the philippines you know mm. i want to be buried there mm. <laughs> i want to go there yeah and yeah she's going there next month i'm like don't die there okay like, <laughs> don't need to die there like, i can't really travel there with that easy You're like, no, 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 no. You know? well, well mom what type of trip is this because yeah. you know i still need yeah yeah no, i haven't been there forever like dad died in canada okay you can't you got to die where he died mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, th- a little, a little bit morbid, but we love it. We love it. We love it. Yeah, there's gonna be a point where you're gonna be like, okay, man, I'm gonna die here, uh, burn my body, you know? Dude, like, turn me into a tree. Uh, uh, turn, me, turn me into a tree, man. That's yeah. that's my plan. But who knows, man? It's a crazy world. Support we support might... Kansai Collective. We'll turn you into a tree after you. <laughs> we'll offer after you tree, pass. tree, tree, cremation, tree, cremations, tree, tree, cremations, <laughs> tree burials. Who knows? <laughs> tree there's, burials. Yo, I saw this. It was there's Plant a dude. Tree, there's a, a startup out of Europe that they they. They bury you in a tree's like oh. it looks like a testicle. Right, I know what you're tree. talking about. The brown. This is true. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a tree. It's like a half-grown tree, mm. and there's wow. a giant dirt sack full of roots underneath, and they put your 
corpse in that in the tree that's you get fire I, like, I would sign like me up, yeah. man. Oh, sign so me it's up. cool their their first thing instead of a graveyard they have memorial forests that's fire under smart. every that's tree awesome. that's smart is like every tr- i mean you walk in you're like oh oh that's a lot of it's a lot of dead people but i guess like <laughs> it's better than tombstones mm-hmm. right i mean you're 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 helping so yeah, so i'm all so i'm all for the the turn me into a tree game Big but like that, man. leo man it has been an absolute pleasure having you on if you guys like yeah. this episode feel free to like subscribe head over to a little bit of japan check out leo his live streams Please. again good guy big shout out to our sponsors tomo here at the deck in homaji japan for giving us this wonderful studio edge wilderness got some of the gear on today our producer aaron hinomaru to my right and yes, donex kabushi geisha Look forward to having you guys on the next episode, and we will see you then. Peace.